First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce y'all to some people. I'm going to introduce you to people I brought with me. Um, you know, they came and hang out with y'all, so yeah, I think y'all should know who they are. Uh, first of all, we got number 86, Jackson Swinley plays wide receiver. Woo! Thirty-seven, Wes Brown. He plays running back. Woo! Right, number ten, Zach Larry. I already met him. He plays quarterback. Woo! I play quarterback also. And this guy right here is really special to all of us. His name is Matthew Hastings. He's our water boy. Yeah. I'm gonna push the record on this. His mom wanted me to record him for us so she could hear what he has to say. Um, he's gonna help me out today, actually. Um, Guys, we are very lucky, and people don't realize it sometimes, how lucky we are. Uh, you know, life can throw you so many different ways if you're not ready for it. And even when you are ready for it, it can. Um, so first off, I'm going to let Matthew take it over for a little bit. He's going to give you all two verses that he's picked, okay? To basically tell you about his life. About how he lives his life, what he feels about it, and how he knows that God has something special for him. And this is a guy, he was born with a disability. And his mom told me that when he was five years old, he looked at her with a straight face and said that God created him to preach. Amen. That God created him to spread the word and do good things. <laughs> All right, so we're going to read you a few verses real quick. You may one first, and then you be born and you were born. He knew me where I was born. Alright, what he said is that God knew him before he was born. God knew everything about him, knew what he was, what knew what he was going to do before he was born. And that's what keeps him going strong every day. All right, you want to read your second one? This means to me the or yeah uh -huh. okay. He knows the thoughts that he has for me. To give me the hope in the future. So that second one was from Jeremiah chapter 11. And it basically is saying that God knows everything about all of us. And He doesn't put stuff in us to harm us. Matthew knows that everything God's done for him has a purpose. And it's for God's plan. And that's one of the first things he told me when I started working with him. Is that he knows that there's a plan for him. And that God's got something special on his life because of it. Okay, so basically this is what I want to talk to you all about. That song we just listened to is basically to the core of what we're about to talk about. Um, who knows that rapper that was in there? Who knows his name? Lecrae. Yeah, it was Lecrae. How many of y'all heard of Lecrae? Alright, well I don't know if y'all realize it or not, but that first part where he's talking is a Bible verse. Alright, so if you pull that Bible verse up. I don't know if y'all caught it. Alright, so this is in Ezekiel. And he comes over these, this valley, and there's nothing but dried up dead bones there. And he's sitting there thinking, and God tells him to prophesy to the bones. Alright? There's nothing but bones. He prophesies to him. He begins to pray over these bones. And all of a sudden, I mean, you can imagine how scared he is, probably. These bones start rattling. They start coming to life. They start, you know, foot bone connects to an ankle bone. 
and all this stuff, so on and so on. And they form skeletons. And then tendons come on the bones. And then flesh comes on the bones. And then before he knows it, he's looking over at this huge army. Okay? But it's not really an army yet, it's just a bunch of people. So then he looks up to God and wants to know what he needs to do next. God says, prophesize to the breath. Now, this is what I really need y'all to get. Okay, because right now, I know some of y'all don't know what it's like to be standing up here like some of us leaders who have Christ. Okay? Y'all are just those bones. Now, when you prophesize this to the breath, God breathed into every single one of those bodies and formed his great army to go out and fight the world for God's sake. We can't do anything without God's breath in our body. Okay, without God's breath, we're just a human being just going around, walking around the earth. When we ask for God's breath to enter our body, enter our heart, that's when we become a soldier for God. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Until we ask for that breath and God breathes into us, like he wants to. God's purpose is to get every single person on this earth to accept him and to come to him. That's what he wants to do. Everybody. Not just me, you know, not just some of the other leaders. He wants every, not just Matthew, he wants every single person to come to him. He doesn't want to see the sin, the danger. It all comes down from his breath being breathed inside of us. Right, now I'm going to tell you all a little something about me. I wasn't always, you know, a strong Christian and followed Christ. It wasn't long ago that I wasn't that. You know, I used God on Saturdays. I'd put this jersey on. I'd take my wrist. I'd write Bible verses. I didn't have the breath in me. I was faking. I used God whenever I needed Him instead of Him using me. I'd go out there on Saturday and pray before every game. I'd listen to my Christian music before games. I didn't really take it in. I didn't believe in it. I just used it. I was using God. What until recently when I decided to give my whole life to Christ. And it's an amazing thing. For those of you that haven't, you have no idea what you're missing until you do it. Alright, so I'm going to tell you about where I was. Grew up in a church my whole life. Family, never missed a Sunday. Went to high school. Was still a good kid. Came to college, got mixed up with some wrong people. Thought I had some friends. Really didn't. Those friends that think it's cool to go out and drink. Those kids that think it's cool to go out and smoke weed. Those really aren't your friends, guys. They're hurting you. Okay? As soon as you make that decision to change your life, they'll forget all about you. There's only one person who won't forget about you. And that's the guy right up there. Okay? So I sat through four years of college wasting my life, doing nothing for it. After, I had all these family troubles. I had a cousin that passed away when I was in high school. How many of y'all have had a death in your family? Y'all know it's hard, right? You know, you got to put blame somewhere. My family put blame on God. Everybody in my family. Instead of turning to Him when we needed Him. We blamed Him. So that's what started my whole thing. Then about three years ago, I got in a wreck. My cousin got in a wreck. Hit a car on his driver's window. Alright? His head hit the window. He died instantly. I'm driving on I-26 going home for the summer. After taking my last exam my sophomore year. Going about 75, draining. I hit a puddle. My car spins under, out of control. I hit a tree on my driver's side window. Bust my head open. I got a scar. Window cracks. I survived. Led me to a lot of questions. My cousin followed Christ. Did everything God wanted him to. He wasn't perfect. But he was a Christ follower. Me, on the other hand, was messing up. Thought it was cool sitting in bars, 
drinking a beer, having fun. What? I hated myself for living. I hated my life. I hated that I was alive for three straight years. Every day, I wondered why I was still on this earth. I hated being alive. Wasting my life. I was sitting here doing nothing. Once again. Then this year came. I went to something. An event called Passion. Does anybody know who, what Passion is? Alright, y'all may be too young. But one day y'all need to go if y'all can. It's for college kids. 18 to 25 years old. It's a three day event in Georgia, down in Atlanta, Georgia. You have guest speakers, you have musicians. That's where that video was from. Chris Tomlin and Lecrae. Saw that at Passion. Saw somebody talk at Passion. That changed my life. January 2nd, 2013. I asked Christ to just completely take my heart over. I surrendered everything and let him take my whole body over. Because that's the only thing I wanted to live for from that point on. It wasn't for going to sit in bars or hang out with those friends that were smoking weed and thinking they were having a good time. I did it for somebody up there. Somebody who died for me. And somebody who died for every one of y'all in this room, whether y'all are saved right now or not. He died for every single person sitting in this building. And the best thing is, he's waiting for you if you haven't had him yet. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart and take you over. I was so far down the line. Who was here uh, last time we had wildlife here and heard Tyler talk about how you're living for this little part of life? Right? Y'all remember that? That's what I was doing. I was living for everything to be good in this little tiny bit that we call life instead of for eternity with God. I just don't want y'all to make that same mistake. Because once you realize it, you're going to be asking yourself why you did it for so long. I ask myself every day why I even put up with the way I was for so long. And it's not a choice that your mom can make, your dad, grandma, grandpa, teachers. It's only inside your heart. It's inside your heart where God can breathe inside you and make those dry bones his soldier. Okay? No value that so we can pray. God, I ask you to be with everybody in this room right now. Be with the ones that haven't well, quite found you and the ones that have. And help the ones that are wondering about you and you know, leaning out for you. Help them to know what it's like to have you in their life, for you to breathe inside them and turn their bones into something special for you. God, I speak for everybody that's been here tonight. I pray for everybody that you know, hasn't had the chance to experience you. I know, like a lot of people know, that you want every one of us to be in your kingdom one day. And it's up to us to choose if that's what we want or not. So God, please continue to touch my heart and touch everybody else's heart in this room. First in your name we pray. Thank you.